When developing a new circuit design, the first step is the high-level system design, which I also call a preliminary design. Before getting into the details of the full schematic circuit design, it's always best to first focus on the big picture of the full system. Designing the system consists mainly of two steps. First, creating a block diagram, and second, selecting all of the critical components. Uh, by critical components, I mean the microchips, sensors, displays, etc. Uh, not the passive components at this point, like capacitors and resistors. A system design treats each function as a black box. So in engineering, a black box it means an object which can be viewed in terms of its inputs and outputs, but without any knowledge of its internal workings. With the system level design, the focus is on the higher level interconnectivity and functionality of the product. A block diagram should include a block for each core function, uh, the interconnections between the various blocks, the, any specified communication protocols, and any known voltage levels, such as the input supply voltage, the battery voltage, etc. Um, as I mentioned, for this first tutorial, we're going to be just focusing on the microcontroller itself, and then in future tutorials, we'll expand on the design to include all of the functionality that you see in this uh, block diagram. For this first version, we're, we've only uh, incorporated the uh, functional blocks that are in yellow. Later, once all of the components have been selected and the required system supply voltages are known, I like to go back and add the supply voltages to the block diagram. By including the supply voltage for each functional block, it allows you to easily identify all the supply voltages that you'll need, um, as well as any level shifters. Uh, because in most cases, when two electronic components need to communicate, they need to use the same supply voltage. If they are supplied from different voltages, then you'll usually need to add a level shifter between the two components. Now that we have a block diagram, we can better understand the necessary requirements for the microcontroller. Because until you've mapped everything out uh, that will connect to the microcontroller, it's really impossible to select the, the, the best microcontroller for your project. So when selecting a microcontroller, or really just about any electronic component, I prefer to use an electronic uh, parts distributor such as uh, Newark.com. Uh, doing so, this allows you to easily compare the various options based on a variety of specifications, pricing, and availability. It's also an easy way to quickly ask, access the component's data sheet. So this is uh, Newark.com's uh, website. So we're going to look for uh, ARM microcontrollers. Then we're going to uh, kind of fine tune the, uh, the list of options based on various criteria. So I always like to make sure it's in stock and that it's uh, marked as uh, being suitable for new designs. Um, you don't want to design something that's not going to be available in the future. Uh, so we're going to narrow it down to the uh, ST micro uh, microelectronics. Uh, we're going to do just uh, Cortex uh, M0 processors. Those are the, the simplest of the Cortex uh, microcontroller architectures. Then we're gonna, I'm going to limit it to around 32 kilobytes of flash memory for program storage, which is, is, is enough for you know, at least a moderately complex uh, project. Then I'm going to, I want to make sure that uh, I select a microcontroller that has a USB port. So uh, you can scroll through the various options on the different types of serial interfaces. So this one's going to have an I2C, an SPI, a UART, uh, and a USB interfaces. So I'm just selecting all the combinations that give me those, uh, those various serial ports. And then uh, that should be all the criteria. So that's narrowed it down to, it looks like, uh, seven products. Oh, I do want to limit the package uh, to leaded packages only, um, like a, a QFP package. So that narrowed it down to three options. And we're going to be going with, I'm going to go with the, the, this first one, the STM32F042, which is a, a good fit for this uh, introductory project. So let's go and pull up the data sheet for that microcontroller. Okay, this is the data sheet for the STM32. You can see it's an ARM-based 32-bit microcontroller with 32 kilobytes of flash, USB, uh, various other interfaces. 
this is the uh, voltage supply uh, power management section. It's 2 to 3.6 on the input supply. Uh, here's the various clock options. We're going to be starting off uh, just using the internal 8 megahertz RC clock. Uh, there's uh, the various uh, GPIO pins that are available, uh, which the number depends on the package. The, the various communication interfaces and I2C, UART, SPI, USB 2.0, and then finally it has a serial wired debug uh, SWD for programming purposes. Okay, so now we're going to begin the uh, working on the schematic uh, circuit design. I'm using a, a software package called DipTrace uh, for designing the schematic and the printed circuit board layout. Uh, there are countless packages out there that you can use. Um, I prefer DipTrace mainly because it's, it's really easy to use, especially if you're a beginner and it's uh, affordable, but yet it's also uh, really powerful and you can, there's, it can pretty much handle about any uh, complexity of design that uh, you'll ever need. So, um, but the, the key is to remember is that this tutorial is really focusing on the design process and not how to use the actual software. So regardless of what package you're using, uh, you should find this tutorial to be uh, quite useful. So we're gonna start off by placing all the components. Um, for this initial tutorial, we only have four components, the microcontroller, the voltage regulator, uh, the programming connector, and then we've got a, a micro USB port that supplies the, the power to the board. So now it's time to place all the capacitors on the board, uh, including the decoupling capacitors for the microcontroller to keep the supply pins uh, stable. And for that, it's best to refer to the data sheet for the microcontroller. You can see here they specify there's a 100 nanofarad in parallel with a 4.7 microfarad capacitor for each uh, supply input. And then for the analog to digital converter supply, there's a 10 nanofarad in parallel with the one microfarad capacitor. Okay, so let's go ahead and place all the capacitors needed. Um, we'll start with, uh, we'll have a capacitor. Uh, we're gonna do a 4.7 microfarad capacitor on the input and the output of the linear regulator, which is U2. Uh, the input is from the micro USB at five volts and the output's gonna be at 3.3 volts. So that's C1 and C2. Now I'm just gonna copy that capacitor over and I'm gonna create the capacitors for each of the supply pins. So there's a VDD pin um, that's gonna require a 4.7 and 100 nanofarad. Uh, then there's a VDD IO pin, which will require the same. Um, also a 4.7 and a 100 nanofarad. So I'll just copy that over here. So those are the two sets for each of the VDD. Then there's the VDDA pin, which is the input supply for the analog to digital converter. That has uh, somewhat different requirements. Uh, that supply is especially uh, critical that it's uh, stable and noise free for accurate measurement of any analog voltage uh, signals. So that one, as we saw, the data sheet specified a 10 nanofarad, which is the same as a 0.01 microfarad a capacitor and a one microfarad capacitor in parallel. So now let's uh, start connecting everything up. We're going to connect up the output of the linear regulator to its output cap. I'll connect the input cap to the input of the power regulator, the voltage regulator. Um, so the output is a 3.3. Now we're going to connect all the the capacitors, the decoupling capacitors for the microcontroller, because they're everything in the microcontroller is going to be powered from this 3.3 uh, voltage supply coming out of U2. So I'll move that up. I'm kind of picky about the schematic looking nice and neat. So let's go ahead and add all the ground, uh, the ground connections. Uh, so each of the capacitors obviously is going to connect into ground. So I'll just copy these over. Okay, now I'm gonna start doing the routing. So I'll just connect each one of those up to the ground. Okay, last one to the ground. Okay, that should be all uh, the capacitors required. So now let's uh, hook up everything else. I'm gonna flip this around just so the, the five volt uh, output 
uh, comes out next to U2 to make the schematic a little neater. Copy to the ground. So we have to hook up the the ground pin and the case uh, to ground on the micro USB connector. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, we got those grounded. So now we're going to connect up the uh, programming connector, which is the JTAG1, which is really uh, SWD, but I've got it labeled as a JTAG connector. We'll label that as VDD. Okay, and I still have to uh, connect up the the VDD lines. I've got the capacitors and everything ready for them. And as we'll discuss when we in the next uh, tutorial, when we uh, do the PCB layout, the placement of these capacitors is uh, very critical. They need to be placed uh, right next to, the, as close as possible to the microcontroller pin so that they can supply uh, any transient loads uh, really quickly and do a better job at filtering out any noise uh, from the supplies. Just label these all VDD. Go ahead and uh, I'm going to rotate these and just kind of line them up with each of the each of the pins. So all of these really connect to the same net, the VDD net, which is the 3.3 volt supply. Now I'm going to add a note uh, in the schematic um, on in regards to the placement of these capacitors. So C3 and C5 here are going to be placed next to pin 1, which is the VDD pin on the microcontroller. Here, let me... Uh, Copy that over to the next set. So then C4 and C6 are going to be placed um, right as close as possible to pin 17, which is the VDD IO pin supply for the microcontroller. And then finally, uh, C7 and 8 are for the input supply to the analog to digital uh, converter. And that's going to be connected to pin 5, or needs to be placed as close as possible to pin 5. So I'll make these all kind of small so that I don't take up too much space on the schematic. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got all the capacitors, everything. So now I oh, need to connect up the VCC on the, the programming connector. I'll label that VDD. The, the, and they don't have to actually connect. You'll notice the VDD lines. Uh, as long as you label them, the schematic software will automatically make sure they're all connected. So we got the programming connector powered and grounded. Uh, so now we've got two programming lines, the SWDIO, which is the data for programming, and the SW. Uh, uh, CLK clock is the clock for the programming. Okay, I'll label that. Okay, so now we just have to connect it up to the microcontroller. So one thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, because microcontrollers are limited on the number of pins, most of them will have uh, multiple functions for each pin. So you need to look up uh, the, the functions available in the pinout. You can see here this is for the 32 pin version that we're looking at. You can see this column is the primary function of that pin, which is the function at uh, upon reset is what it initiates to. But there's also alternate functions for each of the pins that can be programmed. There's, you can see I2C there for clock and data. Uh, this here has got a, uh, the PA0 has got a UR, some timers. Scrolling down through the various pins, and you can just see that you know there's some SPI functions over here for uh, serial communication, timers, another I2C, um, UART, uh, the various uh, signals for the the CAN interface that we're not using. Uh, here's some more I2C, so you can see that's all the, for the pinout. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, connect up the two programming lines now that we know that the SWDIO uh, pin is on pin 23 of the microcontroller, 
and the SWD clock is on uh, pin 24 of the microcontroller. So those are the uh, two programming lines uh, needed uh, for, for, for programming the microcontroller. Okay, so we'll just uh, label those so they'll automatically be connected to uh, the pin out, the pins coming out of the programming connector. Okay, now we just need to add the ground uh, to the microcontroller. Um, so there's there's two, there's a, gr a normal ground and then there's a, a ground for the, once again, for the analog to digital converter power supply. We're going to ground uh, next the boot zero pin, which tells it to just uh, default to booting uh, from the firmware that's stored in the internal flash memory. And then uh, finally, we need to connect up the uh, reset, the in reset. Uh, the in just sort of means negative, so it's, uh, it's reset when this pin is low. So this needs to connect in with the uh, programming connector, so your programmer is able to initiate a reset as necessary from within the programming uh, software. So we'll connect those two up. Now we're just going to add a capacitor, uh, like a small 100 nanofarad capacitor. What this does is this holds the reset pin low uh, initially uh, when you first power up uh, because the capacitor isn't charged, so it's sort of like a short to ground. So that pulls the reset pin down and, and uh, resets the microcontroller. Uh, but really quickly, the, uh, uh, the voltage is, uh, is increased and then the uh, reset is disabled. So it just provides a momentary reset for the microcontroller upon power up. Okay, we've got the ground. Okay, I believe that's everything. Uh, we've got a yeah. Let's connect in this uh, ground detect. Uh, we're not really using that, but since I've got it there, I'll go ahead and connect that in. Uh, now we need to still. Uh, I forgot to connect in the enable pin for the uh, linear regulator U2. Uh, pin three needs to be high to enable it, and I also need the uh, the ground. I hadn't connected up the ground to pin two, so pin three will just tie to V in. So. It's, it basically always defaults uh, to being enabled. Okay, that should do it. Um, there we go. We have our completed schematic.